Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Daphne and Velma, which is a bit of a prequel slash spin-off for the Scooby-Doo franchise and surprisingly doesn't involve any of the other Scooby-Doo Mystery Inc. members apart from Daphne and Velma. Now it's very similar to Mystery Begins in the sense that it is predominantly based in a high school setting it's got a lot of futuristic technology and actually a pretty layered mystery and a complicated villain. So it actually works surprisingly well for this movie, which I am going to be breaking down for you in this video review. So the movie starts off by introducing us to the friendship of Daphne and Velma, which in the beginning is all online based as Daphne hosts a successful supernatural web show where Velma is her online supportive and critical best friend. Now Daphne's family are going to be moving to an area where Velma lives which is going to mean that she is going to be studying at Rich Valley High which is a school that is sponsored by tech company Bloom Initiative which means that all of the students and the school have access to the latest and greatest technology. Now there is a mystery, surprise surprise, happening at this school whereby some of the students, the top performing students, are becoming zombified and roboticized, which obviously means that Daphne and Velma are going to be on the case to try to work out this complicated mystery. So in terms of the cast and characters of this movie, we first have Sarah Jeffries, who is leading the film as Daphne Blake, the popular but nice girl who's been sheltered her whole life and kind of wants to make it on her own, be best friends with Velma Dinkley, and also try to solve mysteries. We then have Sarah Gilman, who plays the character of Velma Dinkley. She's a bit of a no-nonsense, super intelligent character that is very suspicious of everything that's going on. We then have Vanessa Morano, who plays the character of Carol, who is Daphne's senior advisor in the high school. We then have Principal Piper, who is a bit of an eccentric character who kind of wants everyone to be really happy at the high school and use all of the technology. We then have Tobias Bloom, who is the head honcho at Bloom Initiative, and he's the character that I guess you can compare to Steve Jobs as he's creating all of this great technology. And then finally, we have Daphne's parents, who are very controlling and very sheltering for Daphne's entire life, and this is her opportunity to really make it on her own. So from a cast and character's point of view, really interesting group of characters, but you really do miss the rest of the Mystery Incorporated members. So from a visuals point of view, this movie is actually surprisingly decent. The world building creation that they've done from a visuals point of view actually looks really, really cool. The high school looks absolutely brilliant. You really want to be at this high school with all this amazing technology. All of the great technology is really, really futuristic. It looks really believable, which is absolutely brilliant as well. There is a ghost in this movie because it is a bit of a Mystery Incorporated Scooby-Doo-esque type film. I'd say the ghost doesn't look that great, but it's kind of there more for continuity purposes. So from a visuals point of view overall, Daphne and Velma actually looks pretty decent. So from a comparison point of view, I think it's nice that they try to have the focus completely on two characters, which is Daphne and Velma. Obviously they've done this before with just the focus on Shaggy and Scooby in the cartoon series. So this time they're just focusing in live action mode on just the characters of Daphne and Velma. And I guess in terms of comparing it to other live action adaptations, I'm a much bigger fan of all of the Mystery Incorporated gang being together. So I guess comparing it to the other four live action movies, I did actually prefer The Mystery Begins and the two Scooby-Doo live action theatrical releases, but I would say that Daphne and Velma is better than Scooby-Doo and The Curse of the Lake Monster, only because The Curse of the Lake Monster was really obvious and as such, was a little bit predictable in terms of watching it from start to finish. So purely from a mystery point of view, I'd say this movie is better than Curse of the Lake Monster, but unfortunately, comparing it to the other live action movies is just not as good. So overall, I did think that Daphne and Velma was a pretty decent movie. It had a decent setting, a decent story, a decent cast of characters, and a decent final reveal. Like I just said though, I do prefer Scooby-Doo to all be together from a gang point of view. I did appreciate what they did here, but I do prefer when all of the Scooby-Doo members are together. And so for all of those reasons, I'm going to give Daphne and Velma a 4.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.